Welcome back to Pinoy Bounce. We have a special interview with our special guest, and it's Norbert Torres from Rain or Shine, a Filipino Canadian now playing in the Philippines. Norbert, thank you for joining us right now. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Excited. Let's get. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it, Marky. Anything you'd like to say? I know you guys connected on uh, on Instagram, but uh, what do you want to say? Um, what I want to say is that I like how uh, the Filipino Canadian community, the basketball community, are so connected to each other. So uh, me and Norm kind of went through it with um, when Matthew mentioned about the people that he grew up with, the people that he's thankful for in his journey in the basketball community. And he mentioned Norbert, so I kind of came through with Instagram and I said, "Hey, Norb," <laughs> and um, he was so. Um, he was so open with his schedule and kind of shared me his availability to get on and, and really uh, share his story. And I think this is, you know, a good opportunity for our followers, especially the followers that we have that watches our show because they're mostly kids and they're mostly um, Filipino kids that are in, in Canada watching the show and seeing um, uh, Norbert, seeing Matthew Wright, seeing all these Filipino prospects that are playing professionally to pave the way for, for kids nowadays. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for them now to hear the story of what they had to go through to really make it and what it took to make it and see for our followers and audiences to see if it's something that is, you know, they're willing to go through it or something that they're willing to put the, the work in. So that's why, you know, Nor, like you can basically give a start of your story. Where did basketball start it for you? Sorry, that what was... Uh, where did how did basketball started for you or when did it started for in your life? Uh, well, I guess it, it all started uh, in Filipino leagues, man. Um, uh, playing at least at a competitive level. Uh, started around the age of twelve. Uh, playing in Lacan, and uh, just didn't stop from there. Like I just fell in love with the game right away, type of thing. Mm. And do you play it for Lacan? And are there any stories, any people that you came across in the league that really made you enjoy playing there or coaches or that you remember? Uh, yeah, definitely. There is definitely Matthew. Matthew was like my teammate, like my longest teammate that I've ever had. And it, it, it kind of started like uh, with with friends. So like my, my family friend would bring me over and then that's kind of kind of introduced me to it because like, I was like, I was like a six footer already at like age twelve, I think. <laughs> wow. So, so from there, like, I, I kind of like my skills kind of just started to develop slowly every year, and um, so playing like with Matthew, playing with Nico, with Marco, Ken, like, there's just so many friends out there that um, that was kind of like what I enjoyed more playing with playing with the group of friends more than anything, and uh, seeing them every weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you moved on to high school or rep basketball, um, what changed and what do you remember about playing in more competitive type of uh, teams? It was a lot more, yeah, of course, like it was a lot way more serious. It was way more serious, like uh, playing um, in high school like, uh, for uh, Mother Teresa, playing for O'Connor. Um, I just realized like it's way more competitive. Like there's like, there's, there's a world out there where it's just a lot harder, a lot harder to play. But um, just being able to uh, persevere through that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, for you, you played on the Philippine national team, right? When was when did they scout you, or what was the? Um, how did they get to know your skills, and uh, how did you get to be on their radar? Um, this was for the under eighteen for yeah. under eighteen. Yeah. yeah, under under 18, it's kind of a long story, though. We're like, <laughs> I'll try to make it short. Basically, um, one of the coach of the under 18 team uh, called up a friend um, in Toronto and then asked if there's any 18-year-olds um, that, uh, that he should take a look at. And um, it was actually John. John Samir was the one who hooked it up. John called up James. And then James apparently was just a year older, so he didn't make the cut. He was uh, born in mm-hmm. '89, wow. and then fortunately, I was still born '90, so I was I was still under 18 at the time. And then uh, from there, I, that was kind of the bridge that brought me to the under 18 team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So shout out to How did you? Um, <laughs> we actually had John in uh, in our show, and he talked so much about the culture and how tight it was for you guys for the twenty five for life. He mentioned about the legacy of it. Him, with, you know, uh, with the with James Forrester, John, and um, uh, and the, for your end, like, how did you kind of discover that? Hey, baby, basketball is something that I could do professionally, or it's something that I could do as a career. Hey, that's is there a moment in your time that it came to you, like, hey? I think this is something that I really want to do and I'm going to commit to it. I probably realized like I could, like I, I really wanted to pursue basketball as a professional, like as a profession, probably grade nine, grade 10. I kind of knew that I wanted basket, like basketball to continue after high school at least. And then it's just that at the back of my head, I kind of knew that Philippines was the way to go type of thing like I, like I wanted to just play in the Philippines basically already at a young age mm. and so it was perfect so it was perfect timing when I got that call to play for the under 18 so I, like, I just had to take it so mm. and then from there kind of like everything just fell into place type of thing were there any 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 big lessons that you've learned or mistakes that you wish uh that that you learned from during like before you got into the league anything that you maybe um took for granted or any real lessons that you can share or to, to, to the kids that want to play in the Philippines or play next level? I am trying to think, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, like, it, sounds, it sounds so unreal, but I'm trying to think like if there was a mistake in choosing, like I have no regrets, mm. like, you know, coming early at, a, at an early age. Um, any, any, any interesting lessons from a coach or a friend that they told you before you made your jump to the Philippines? Probably from, it was, it was actually from like one of my titos back home. He was telling me that just, just be careful out there in the Philippines, like, like stay focused. Like you're not going to have your family with you. Unless, so it's just going to be, like, you have to realize it's just going to be you out there basically. And uh, that's a big sacrifice. So like you're leaving, you're leaving this world behind, like you're leaving Canada. So you just have to focus in on basketball. Uh, your whole time there and uh, those words kind of stuck with me I guess when times were were a little hard I guess yeah mm-hmm. so yeah, that helped with my Tito mm. see Tito's you, have, you had, Tito's have some words wise, of wisdom you know? <laughs> hey <laughs> no, listen, just, uh... listen the first the first part just ended really quick but when we come back Norbert's still with us uh, for part two we're going to talk about his professional career so stay tuned There you have it. That was the first part of the interview with Norbert. We talked about his journey growing up and playing in the Filipino basketball community. Make sure you tune back for the next episode where we're going to talk about his professional career. Stay ballin' and have a great day.